Don't miss the awesome Naruto stories my sister creates. Her last channel was hacked, so to stay in the loop, please subscribe to her new channel. It would mean a lot to her, and you won't regret it. Hello to all lovers of Lemon Scenes. I invite you all to my boosty so you can watch your favorite Naruto What If stories in complete comfort. A subscription to Naruto Lemon. The first video with a full lemon is already on my boosty channel. Dare. However, it turned her on even more. This bewitching action dragged on for some more time, after which the Joker, breaking their connection and pouring out onto Kimiko's stomach, collapsed next to her. After that, they lay for a long time on the damp bed in silence, looking in different directions and as if forgetting about each other, because this couple was held together by nothing except satisfied mutual desire and a common goal. When Naruto decided to turn around, breaking out of the pool of thoughts that had consumed him, he found that Jean had already gone to the shower. Listening to the murmur of water in the next room, he, without noticing it, fell asleep, thereby postponing the details of the plan to escape from AIM for some more time. Three years ago, the wind agitated the dark blue curtains, which had previously withstood all its merciless gusts. Having broken through, the invisible herald of bad weather took a few steps forward, touching with something a cup carelessly left by one of the visitors at the very edge of the table. She, turning over in the air and pouring drops of unfinished coffee onto the floor, hit the parquet boards and split in two with a loud crack. Surprisingly, this rarely happens. After all, it happens that something breaks into small fragments, the handle of something simply breaks off, and something remains completely unharmed, having earned from this world the right to continue existing. But, alas, in this case this did not happen. The owner of the establishment began to wail, cursing everything in the world and not mincing words. A moment later he disappeared, apparently going off to find a dustpan and broom to clean up the mess. Two clients in black raincoats with curious designs of red clouds were left in splendid isolation. One of them looked back, and from under a straw hat. The gaze of two red lights fell on two almost equal porcelain halves. Not a good sign, muttered his partner, if that's what you could call the man. Once upon a time, the Uchiha traveled with someone in whom he was infinitely confident, even though he was not connected with that person by ties of friendship. Now there was someone nearby who should be feared. The one who sets the conditions himself, who runs everything from the shadows and is guided by his own goals, often turning a blind eye to what others desire. Probably, over more than a hundred years it simply became a habit. However, if you believe the story that Itachi knew by heart, Madara had always been such a person. If you compare him with Sasori, then the puppeteer was more likely a man in a mask. His art of managing destinies was amazing. Who knows what would have happened if he had not once met Pain and Conan and had not pushed them to create Akatsuki. Who knows what the fate of Itachi himself would have been like if he had not met Madara and followed his lead, receiving at the same time an order from the leadership of the village that turned the Uchiha's whole life upside down. It was probably on that day that Itachi's life began to fall apart at the seams. Although he rarely remembered this and carried out orders from the real leader of Akatsuki, either as payback for the fact that he had once helped him, or because there was simply no other choice. It wasn't until he and Pain saw the light, thinking that they could choose their own path, getting rid of the oppression of someone who had already lived in this world longer than expected. If your words are to be believed, there shouldn't be any problems with the three tales, Itachi reminded him. He looked at him through the slit of the mask. There are always problems with the three tales, even if it is already in your hands, he said mysteriously, causing his partner the feeling that some old story was connected with this biju, which the masked man remembered at that moment. Twirling a small skewer of dango in his fingers, reminiscent of a long toothpick, the legend of the past carefully lifted the mask, revealing not enough for Itachi to remember the few images of Uchiha Madara that he had seen but enough for him to eat three balls of sweet sauce one after another. After this, 
the face of the masked man was again completely hidden under the veil of secrecy. We should hit the road, Toby muttered, getting up from his seat, and Itachi followed suit. One way or another, the Three Tails has been waiting for my return for a long time. Okay, the Uchiha nodded and, pressing the edge of the bill for the owner of the establishment with a plate so that it would not be blown away by the wind, he followed his partner. On the way out, he took one last look at the two perfectly even halves of the cup, not even suspecting how accurately this accident prophesied the inevitable future. The air outside was humid, there was always a foggy haze hanging in it, which made everything around seem so mysterious. Somewhere in the distance the sounds of raging waves crashing against the shores of the island could be heard. However, they were often drowned out by the wind, whose sudden gusts momentarily blew away the foggy curtain, and then the holes in it were closed again. The two shinobi walked forward, each lost in their own thoughts. It must be said that during the time they spent as a team, Itachi never got used to his partner. A couple of missions, insignificant for an organization like Akatsuki, assigned to two Uchihas ended very quickly. However, even during this time, Itachi managed to disagree with the methods of the masked man several times, however, he only dared to voice his opinion on this matter once. They were not used to having long conversations often, their conversations mainly concerned only missions. However, Sometimes Toby said something that gave rise to many theories and conjectures in his partner's mind. However, the masked man remained the same mystery as before and did not talk about his past. The road led them straight to the village of the Hidden Mist, which was located among rocks covered with a variety of greenery. Here we come, muttered the masked man as soon as they approached the gate. Itachi wanted to call out to his partner and remind him that they usually enter the village secretly, trying to be unnoticed, but Toby was already confidently moving forward, and the two guards, who noticed the strangers in Akatsuki cloaks, froze in their places, forgetting about what they saw. Welcome to Kirigakure, Toby said as Itachi also passed the gate and found himself in the village. The buildings, so different from the architecture of Kanoha, Suna and even Amigekure, were also partially covered with moss and lichens, which was not surprising given the humidity. The ubiquitous fog made no exception for this place. We can say that there was more of it here than anything else, which, however, did not bother the residents at all. And if Itachi needed some time to stop being surprised by the features of one of the five great villages, then the citizens of Kirigakure calmly scurried along the streets, not paying attention to the fog, or to the trees growing from the roofs of houses, or to the ubiquitous moss. Kisame wasn't lying. It really is very beautiful here, Itachi said, causing bewilderment in his partner. It seemed that he had a hard time believing that the Uchiha had never been to this village in his entire life. This is not the time to enjoy the views, Toby grinned, turning his gaze to the tower-like building visible ahead and noticeably different in size. The Three Tails is already waiting. The Uchiha nodded and moved after the masked man, at the same time casting glances at people, shops and architectural monuments. The surprising thing is that whoever noticed the two Akatsuki, after a couple of moments, he turned away instead of sounding the alarm and calling the shinobi to the rescue. And Itachi was sure that after the Five Kage summit, every village was aware of who the people in cloaks were and what threat they posed. However, unlike other villages, Kirigakure has not yet suffered in any way from the actions of the organization. Both of her Jinchuriki were alive and free for now. One was now being sought by Zetsu, the other, according to Toby's words, was waiting for their arrival here. Itachi was once again amazed at how skilled the masked man was in controlling the Sharingan when even the ANBU of the Mist cleared the way for them to enter the Mizukage residence. Climbing the stairs and going straight to the office of the head of the village, the Akatsuki stopped in front of a table littered with a pile of papers, behind which sat a child in a huge chair. It was a boy dressed in green clothes, looking no older than fourteen years old, with ashen hair and bright pink eyes, under one of which there was a vertical ugly scar, spoiling the impression that the guy was completely unaware of the hardships of life as a shinobi. There was a staff leaning against the chair, 
which the boy immediately grabbed when he saw who had come to him without an invitation. You, he managed to squeeze out before falling into Genjutsu and going limp in the chair. Yagura, your time has come, Toby grinned, flashing his Sharingan through the hole in his mask, and turned to Itachi. That's it, I told you it wouldn't take much time. The Uchiha swallowed. The way Toby had ushered them here smoothly without anyone even having a word to say about them was truly impressive. What were the other trump cards that the legendary shinobi kept up his sleeve? And did anyone have a chance in battle with him? Itachi had been asking this question for a long time, but now he was forced to remember it again, because at that very moment, in the window to which the masked man stood with his back, a blurry silhouette appeared in a black cloak with a pattern in the form of red clouds, behind the back of the unexpected guest were visible paper wings. Itachi realized at the last moment what this could mean. Payne decided that it was time to act now, otherwise it would be very difficult to defeat Toby in the future. Before Toby could turn around, sensing the presence of someone else with his back, a paper lance rushed towards him like lightning causing the glass to crumble into small fragments with a distinct ringing sound. However, the weapon never hit the target, but passed through it, and Itachi, whose Sharingan lit up in his eyes, miraculously managed to dodge. Conan, how do we understand this? Muttered the man in the mask, turning to the window and narrowing his red eye angrily. Flapping her paper wings and continuing to hang in the air, she looked at him with hatred. You've been manipulating us for too long. It's time to return Akatsuki to its rightful owner, she said and nodded. Itachi realized that the nod was intended for him. It was necessary to act quickly before Toby realized what was happening and did not expect another stab in the back. A kunai fell from his sleeve into the shinobi's palm, with which he immediately attacked his partner, aiming for the back of his head but he again turned out to be more prudent than expected. Without allowing the weapon to finish what it started, the masked man turned around and, instantly crouching down, touched his hand to the floor. The Uchiha did not have time to understand what happened. The floor under his feet cracked, and several wooden tentacles quickly burst out, twisting him and carrying him to the ceiling. The next moment, they, together with the prisoner, perplexed by the fact that Toby possesses the wood release, broke through the only obstacle in their path, and Itachi was thrown onto the roof. Toby grinned, turned back to Conan and took a few steps towards the window. His cloak began to flutter under the flapping of her wings. Squinting, the masked man saw a growing white dot in the sky. Looks like it was Daydara. And a moment later it became clear that he was not alone. So, a coup? I never thought you'd have the guts to stand in my way, he said. With a quick and yet careful movement, the masked man put his hand on Yagura, who was limp in the chair, on the shoulder. I'll give you a head start of a couple of seconds. And the three tails will still be useful to me, with these words Akatsuki and his prey disappeared into the spatial vortex. A huge clay bird landed on the roof of the building, and first Daydara and then his passenger jumped off it in turn. Rising and shaking off his cloak, Itachi glanced with considerable surprise at Payne, Daydara and Conan, who had fluttered up to them. You should at least warn, he muttered disapprovingly, looking at Payne. There was no time to warn, Nagato and I decided to act as soon as Zetsu discovered the six tails, Conan said, landing on the roof as the wings behind her folded like the wings of a paper airplane. I'm glad you're with us, Itachi turned to Daydara. I won't pretend that I support your incomprehensible plan, hmm. I don't even really care what happens to the tailed ones in your hands or in the hands of this guy. But I always welcome the chance to make a big boom, especially when Leader Sama turned out to be not the worst guy, the demolitionist straightened his bangs with a snap of his finger. Not long before he died after our fight with the Four Tails, Sasori-sama told me that perhaps my art was worth something, hmm. You will have a chance to prove it, all four heard a voice from the opposite end of the roof. A moment earlier, Toby, Kakuzu, Haydn and Zetsu appeared from a new spatial vortex. Now eight Akatsuki members, split into two groups, stood facing each other. 
It was difficult to predict whose victory this battle would end and how it would turn out for the whole world. Three years ago. Everything seemed to freeze as the eight shinobi lined up against each other on the roof of the Mizukage residence. Everyone except the residents of Kirigakure, who either by a happy coincidence did not hear the roar with which the roof was broken, or were still under Tobi's genjutsu. A powerful gust of wind momentarily dissipated the foggy curtain that made it difficult for the opponents to see each other. He agitated their cloaks, and for a moment it seemed that all eight of them were butterflies sitting on a huge leaf and preparing to fly into the air. It could be worse, Payne muttered. Assessing the chances of success. The face of the red-haired man with piercings remained just as cold and indifferent to everything. However, this was not the real pain, but only one of the vessels that were never good at conveying the emotions of the owner of all six bodies. However, this was not required, and the impenetrability inherent in Nagato's puppets, on the contrary, more often played into his hands. The Rinnegan glowing in his eyes guaranteed the original leader of the organization victory over any opponent, except perhaps Toby, who turned out to be full of surprises and could be hiding many more trump cards up his sleeve. I'll take Madara on myself. Itachi, Conan and Daidara nodded, agreeing that the strongest must fight the strongest. Itachi thought that he would be the one who would have to face Madara in a duel, but Pain was connected by a much more ancient history with the masked man than himself. Apparently, this battle was predetermined by fate. I'll take care of Kakuzu, Itachi decided, realizing that of all three remaining Akatsuki, he posed the greatest threat. A thug in a hood and a black rag mask hiding half of his face flashed his green eyes. It seemed like he had been itching for a long time to find out which of him and Itachi would win in a fight with each other. It's a bit cramped in here, don't you think? He muttered, turning to the Uchiha. Follow me. The next moment, the two jumped out of their seats and rushed across the rooftops to a place more suitable for a fight. Following them, Conan and Haydn disappeared, and then Zetsu and Daidara. The leaders of the split organization were left alone. I think we should also choose another place for the battle, otherwise there will be nothing left of the village, Payne said coldly, realizing that casualties could not be avoided if he had to fight here. The masked man ignored his offer. I assumed that you would sooner or later rebel against me, Toby grinned, and the Sharingan flashed through the slit of his orange mask. So I prepared. If you think that you and I are equal in strength, then you are mistaken. Payne's Rinnegan, which allows him to see everything and everyone, could not help but notice how, as if at someone's command, a whole wave of chakra rushed towards the residence building from all sides. Is this reinforcement? Where? A moment later everything became clear. The shinobi of Kirigakure, under the control of a treacherous masked man, rushed towards the two Akatsuki through the streets and rooftops. In an instant, they all pushed off with their feet and made a jump, becoming like a whole swarm and at the same time like a shrinking circle. Taking a closer look, Payne realized that these were not just shinobi subjugated to Madara's will using genjutsu. Among these people were ninjas and ordinary people, moving much more slowly, but no less decisively. Familiar red lights burned in their eyes, because of which the chakra of each and every one acquired much greater significance and power. Sharingans? He implanted Sharingan into each of them. Flashed through Payne's head, who instantly realized how carefully the masked man had prepared for this battle. Shinra Tensei exclaimed the owner of the Rinnegan, quickly accumulating telekinetic chakra and then throwing it out at once. The next moment, a gigantic explosion of chakra thundered in the center of the village. The sphere of powerful energy expanded in all directions, destroying everything in its path and sparing in either flesh nor stone. The masked man, who had been expecting such a turn of events, disappeared into a spatial vortex, thereby escaping from the enemy's equipment and Kirigakure looked more and more like a huge desert crater with each passing moment. The curtain of fog gave way to dust clouds, in which it was difficult to see anything. 
However, it was not difficult for Payne's Rinnegan to determine where Toby was when he reappeared on the battlefield. The masked man reappeared from the spatial vortex, landing on the ground. He had only been gone for a few seconds, but now instead of the amazing village there was a huge hole in the rocky ground. Partially strewn with the surviving rubble of buildings and bodies, those whom Payne's divine punishment had not crushed into dust. Looking up into the sky, the Uchiha tried to make out Payne's figure hovering there, but he wasn't there. Toby even shuddered when he found himself surrounded by six Payne bodies that unexpectedly landed from somewhere above. Meanwhile, two other Akatsuki, flying for a long time somewhere along the branches of trees through the forest, finally landed in the center of some gloomy clearing forgotten by people, at the same moment recoiled from each other and, armed in the air, found themselves at a distance of about 20 meters from each other. The first shuriken was thrown by Kakuzu, who, however, did not particularly try to hit Itachi, knowing that with the help of Dojitsu he would easily repel this attack. And so it happened. The Sharingan lit up in Itachi's eyes, and Akatsuki threw a kunai forward, which hit the sharp tip of the blade directly into the finger hole in the metal star and pinned it to the tree trunk on the side of the enemy. I was always worried about the question of what is more important, experience or talent. Now we'll check this, the green-eyed man grinned, and Itachi remembered how much older he was, if, according to rumors, he fought with the first Hokage. Fire release, great fireball. He decided not to bother himself with an answer and immediately go on the attack. The enemy did not hesitate and responded with a water technique, which instantly extinguished the fiery sphere, preventing it from getting closer. There was so much water that the entire clearing looked like one continuous puddle, but this was precisely what allowed Itachi to predict the enemy's next move and jump onto the branch of the nearest tree in time. Lightning release, electric storm. Kakuzu exclaimed, jumping onto a stump to avoid being hit by his own technique, and using a new combination of hand seals, causing several bright flashes of lightning, which fell from the sky and hit the water. Unfortunately, Akatsuki was too confident in his victory and therefore did not immediately notice that the enemy had eluded the combination of the two techniques. Noticing the Uchiha on the tree, Kakuzu grimaced in disappointment, although this was not visible under the mask. He threw his hand forward, and it suddenly shot out of the sleeve of his cloak, separating from his body. Itachi barely managed to cover himself with his hands when a petrified fist slammed right into him, knocking him off the branch and forcing him to fly back. The former ANBU flew a few more meters until he knocked down another tree, crashing into it at high speed. I thought it would be more difficult, Kakuzu muttered slightly sadly, wincing from the slight earthquake caused by the fall of the tree, and slowly moved into the forest to finish off the enemy. But a sudden surge of chakra, which even a ninja without sensory abilities could feel, made him recoil. There was a cracking noise with which tree trunks broke, and then a roar with which they fell to the ground. Kakuzu stared wide-eyed at the huge translucent skeleton with bright yellow lights in its eye sockets that appeared out of nowhere. Inside it was Itachi, seemingly unharmed. Susanu, Itachi whispered, a bloody tear rolling down his cheek. With an effort of will, the Uchiha forced the skeleton to raise his hand. The hilt of a sword appeared in the palm of the ghostly giant without flesh, and the next moment a blade of bright flame grew from it. It can't be Tatsuka's sword? Akatsuki exclaimed, knowing something about ancient artifacts. The next moment the nuke Nin writhed, wincing in pain. For shadows separated from his body from under his cloak and took the forms of monsters wearing masks made of a black, incomprehensible substance. Fire release, spiral of flame. Wind release, vacuum explosion. Said the shinobi, and two masked creatures opened their mouths, bringing down the full power of complementary destructive techniques on Itachi. Itachi closed his eyes from the blinding flash. Even inside Susanu's rib cage, overflowing with ice-cold chakra. It became hot under the pressure of such a wild flame. The trees around our hero flared up and in a couple of moments turned into coals, the grass instantly turned to ash, 
the ground turned black. Thick and acrid smoke rose into the air from everywhere. The battle between Payne's six bodies and the masked man continued. After Payne, with his long red hair in a ponytail, summoned a giant rhinoceros with a rinnegan in its eyes and multiple chakra receptacles all over its body, Toby had to retreat to avoid being trampled or impaled on a huge horn. However, he just as quickly went on the attack. Having disappeared into a spatial vortex and avoiding a sad fate under huge hooves, the masked man appeared behind the enemy in charge of the summoning techniques, after which he touched him with his palm. Many bloody wooden spikes erupted from the body of a long-haired man with piercings, and he fell dead. Even though all the Rinnegans were connected to each other, and Nagato managed to see how the enemy appeared in the most unexpected place, it was impossible to prevent his attack, his spatial technique was too fast. Plus, Toby's ability to use wood release was new. Standing over the defeated Chikashoto, Toby did not hesitate and immediately attacked again, disappearing in one place and appearing in a completely different place, on the side of Jigakudo. Payne's second body was a short-haired man with a sullen expression and especially large chakra receivers, his ability was to restore other bodies. The masked man not only knew about the abilities of each of the bodies, but also thought out the order in which they should be disposed of. But this time they managed to react properly to Toby's appearance. As soon as the Uchiha appeared near Jigakudo, he grabbed his hand, preventing him from touching himself and being filled with tree thorns. However, the second hand of the masked man remained free, and before the enemy could grab it too, he used another technique. Uchiha Kenjin. He exclaimed, and small lights flashed at Akatsuki's fingertips. Grabbing Jigakudo's restraining hand by the wrist, Toby not only freed himself from his iron grip, but also caused his enemy's skin to bubble, after which he disappeared into a dark red barrier of chakra resembling flames, burning alive within it. The Uchiha prudently jumped away from his own technique, knowing how dangerous this Fuinjutsu was. From behind, Gakido, a man with slicked back red hair, jumped at the masked man. A metal rod emerged from his palm, with which he hoped to pierce the enemy. But then a new surprise awaited pain. The masked man became intangible, and his body simply passed through him. But Nagato's Rinnegan realized where this technique was weak, and as soon as the enemy regained flesh and blood, Tendo, the strongest body capable of controlling gravity, raised his hand and said. Bansho Tenen. Toby was torn off the ground and flew straight into the clutches of the enemy, who was already waiting for him with a new metal rod in his hand. The Uchiha tried to move, but before he could do so, Toby was attacked from the side by Shirado, whose hand turned into something resembling a rocket, and the masked man was swept away by this charge. For a moment he disappeared in a bright explosion, and during this time Payne managed to pull all the surviving bodies to him, of which there were four left. When Akatsuki reappeared, the four Paynes saw his true face as the mask was destroyed in the explosion. This man bore little resemblance to Madara, whose images, although rare, were still found in historical manuscripts and architectural monuments, like the statue in the notorious Valley of the End. This man looked to be about 30 to 35 years old, however, the ugly scars, like wrinkles, covering half of his face made him look older. Toby had short black hair and his Sharingan glowed with red lights in his eyes. Are you really Madara? Payne asked, realizing that the enemy had been misleading him for too long. I am his echo, he responded, looking at the four bodies of the enemy and wondering how to attack this time. And my name won't mean anything to you. Even if I tell it to you. The next moment, Toby's fingers quickly formed several seals, and he breathed out a spiral of flame at his enemies, which he strengthened with the help of the spatial technique of the Mangekyo Sharingan. Fire Element, Wild Dance. Gakido jumped forward, holding his hands out in front of him to absorb the technique. The fire was so bright that Payne temporarily lost the connection between all the Rinnegans, which gave Toby a new chance to attack. Tendo, Payne's beloved body, shuddered as a dimensional hole whooshed open behind him, from which Toby flew out with a blue chakra sphere spinning in his hand. 
Pain instantly turned around and would have had time to counterattack if not for the surprise that gripped Nagato at the sight of this technique. Raisin He squeezed out, remembering that this was his teacher's technique, and the next moment a blue sphere pierced him right through. The Uchiha coughed, however, not from the smoke, but feeling that the illness had caught him by surprise at the wrong time. As soon as Kakuzu's technique died down, the skeleton of Susanoo, which protected the owner from death, dissipated. The Uchiha had to drop to one knee to catch her breath. It was not easy to fight someone who could use all five elements at a masterful level, and at the same time, combining techniques with each other and getting killer combinations. It was more interesting to fight with your young brother, Kakuzu decided to egg him on. Even though they weren't at your level yet, they were a little more creative. Itachi remembered how he then appeared with Tobi in the destroyed Takigekir, where his brother, along with his team, who by chance happened to be there on a mission, encountered Kakuzu and Haydn. It seems that Sasuke and his friends managed to give the Nukneen duo a good beating then. And they might even have lost if not for the sudden appearance of a masked man and Itachi. Or maybe everyone would have died, because it was then that Naruto decided to release the enraged Nine Tails, which had been languishing in his body for so many years. But now the Uchiha was not thinking about that. In his memories, the moment when Sasuke, overcome with hatred, rushed at him with threats to kill him clearly flashed. He seemed to take the words Itachi said to him on the night of the extermination of the Uchiha clan quite seriously. Now Sasuke hated Itachi more than anything in the world. On the one hand, Itachi was glad that this hatred protected his brother from the bitter truth and gave him strength, as intended, on the other hand, he was still bitter that this was exactly how their fate turned out. Yes, and that young Uchiha. What was her name, Mikoto? She has incredible talents for her age, Kakuzu recalled. You did a bad job, Itachi, if two whole Uchiha survive that night. Or do you have a soft spot for kids? Mikoto? The mention of his mother's name sharply pricked the Uchiha's heart, but then he remembered that we were talking about a completely different person, a girl who was on the same team with Sasuke and Naruto. It's amazing that everything coincided so well that she had this name, and in general she looked like her and Sasuke's mother. Itachi never wondered where young Mikoto came from, because he did not remember that there was anyone in the Uchiha clan with that name besides his mother. But the former ANBU knew everyone he killed that night by sight. And so, when these strange thoughts first occupied him, Itachi's thoughts were interrupted by a coughing fit. The Uchiha spat out blood. Excessive use of the Mangekyo Sharingan over the past years has greatly affected his health, and not only his eyesight. He looked up to see Kakuzu slowly approaching him. One of the shinobi's hands turned to stone, apparently it was with this that the shinobi intended to finish off the Uchiha. Their gazes met. Your heart will be useful to me, Kakuzu grinned, taking another confident step forward. Suddenly the whole world around Akatsuki floated. His foot, instead of stepping on the hard, charred ground, got stuck in something. The shinobi cursed and tried to pull her out of there. But to no avail. Helplessly looking around, the trapped Akatsuki noticed that everything around him had become somehow red and blurry. Accompanied by the loud cawing of ravens that appeared from nowhere, Itachi appeared in front of him, in whose eyes red lights were burning with a pattern in the form of a three-pointed shuriken. Kakuzu flinched when Itachi suddenly turned into the one who dealt a shameful defeat to the Nukneen decades ago. Hashirama Senju himself, the first Hokage, stood in front of him, clutching his sword in his hand. The next moment he swung, and... Itachi rose to his feet, while the enemy caught in Tsukuyami, on the contrary, fell to his knees. While he was writhing in convulsions, the Uchiha made all the other hearts of the enemy, who had the appearance of black creatures in masks, flare up with the black flame of Amaterasu. The next moment, a kunai fell from his sleeve into his palm, and with one blow Akatsuki plunged it into the last heart, forcing the defeated enemy, who had never left the world of nightmares, to stretch out on the ground scorched by flames, choking on his own blood. Nintendo, 
A long-haired pain with the ability to drain souls, rushed forward to take advantage of the pause Toby was taking between movements and grab him. However, he was dexterous enough to tear his hand out of the body of the defeated enemy and jump back. Payne only managed to grab the sleeve of his cloak and tear it off, revealing to the world the unnaturally pale color of the skin of the villain's arm, making it clear that it was not made of flesh and blood. Toby grinned as he landed five meters away from the remaining three. He was pleased with how the balance of power had changed. He clearly had an advantage, because the enemy had lost his main weapon. You shouldn't have gone against me, Nagato, he muttered when Gakito and Nintendo simultaneously rushed towards him, armed with metal rods. Having made several seals, the false Madara slammed his palm on the ground. Wood element, great tree spears. The rocky soil split under the force of powerful tree tentacles, which broke free and, grabbing both attackers, squeezed them with terrifying force. Gakito, capable of neutralizing even such a technique, did not have time to do this, and after that an avalanche of unbridled wood rushed towards Shirado, the last surviving body of pain. The bald man, whose skin was covered in chakra receptacles, turned into something that hardly resembled a person. Additional arms emerged from his body, equipped with missiles and cannons. Nagato immediately opened fire, destroying everything in his path. However, Toby again transferred his body to the Kamui dimension, becoming invulnerable even in the face of such firepower. When Shirado had used up all the weapons he had, he rushed forward, straight at the Uchiha, who stood among a pile of flaming wood debris. Toby realized what he was trying to do when the bald pain's skull opened up and a bright light illuminated everything around him. He managed to disappear into a spatial vortex before a living bomb wiped him off the face of the earth. Appearing on the battlefield again, the Uchiha sighed with satisfaction. All that remains is to find the real you, and that's the end of it, he muttered, realizing that he had spent almost all his available chakra in this duel. In addition, I was already starting to see double from the excessive use of Mangekyo. They needed rest. Are you so sure about this? A woman's voice was heard from somewhere behind. Turning around, Toby saw a blue-haired girl in a black, torn in places, cloak with red clouds hovering a couple of meters above the ground. Paper wings flapped behind her. Conan was greatly affected by the fight with Haydn. Blood dripped onto the ground. It seems that he managed to inflict several deep, possibly fatal wounds on her. So Haydn failed? Probably she smashed it into many small pieces and buried it somewhere? The Uchiha grinned, realizing that the longer he waited, the more likely it was that he would be able to recover. You always showed great promise, Conan. Sorry, I took the wrong side. Get out of the way and let me finish off Nagato. Maybe then I'll think about sparing you. Do not get your hopes up. This may be the last thing I do, but I won't let you kill Nagato. She said, throwing up her hands and at the same moment turning into many pieces of paper, or rather, explosive seals. When the pieces of paper swirled around him like a whirlwind, and thousands of others were added to them, coming off the surface of the crater, Toby realized with horror what would happen in the next moment. When the thought that he could not move, having spent too much chakra, overtook him, the false Madara drowned in a thousand explosions. Conan, whispered the exhausted Nagato, who fell out of the chair-like structure. He was skinny as a skeleton. And metal pins protruded from the red-haired man's back, reminiscent of the very day when he became disabled. The giant tree, a shelter created by the blue-haired girl to hide the location of the real pain, was shattered into many pieces by a strong gust of wind. This could only mean one thing, Conan was dead. He found himself in the forest. The branches of the trees closed overhead, not allowing even a ray of sun to break through the thick foliage. The fog spread across the ground like a ghostly haze, giving this place some kind of mystical atmosphere. Nagato's palms rested on the ground, covered with green, wet grass. From grief and overwhelming anger, Payne wanted to tear out these small green sprouts, but he could not find the strength to do it. 
Nagato, the last of the Uzumaki clan, a hoarse voice was heard, and the red-haired man hardly looked up at Toby, who appeared from the spatial vortex, covered in terrible burns. In addition to the fact that the Uchiha was missing his right arm, one of his eyes was closed, which indicated that Akatsuki had used some kind of forbidden dojitsu technique to save his life. However, the attempt to escape was not the most successful, it seems that the last series of explosions still managed to catch the false Madara and leave their mark on him. He also held on with all his might. He could barely stand on his feet and was ready to fall at any moment. But before that, Toby had to finish what he started. Finish off pain. You killed her. Nagato squeezed out, digging his fingers into the ground. Tears were streaming down his cheeks. It seemed that this was the first time in many years that the leader of Akatsuki allowed himself to cry. He lowered his head, unable to look at the killer any longer. She deserved it, Nagato, just as you deserved it by going against me. Think about so much that we could achieve together. And you destroyed all of it with your trick, Toby croaked, taking another step towards his victim. But it's okay, Zetsu and I will finish what we started. And first. Nagato raised his head sharply. You will die first. He shouted, and the ground shook with such force that green leaves began to fall. A huge statue of Ghetto Mazo burst out from under her with a wild roar. Finding itself directly behind Nagato, the heretic statue once again merged with him, plunging several giant metal pins into the already tortured back of the shinobi. But he didn't seem to care at all. Seal of the Nine Phantom Dragons. He shouted, choking on his own blood. The next moment, nine rays of light, transformed into nine snakes made of blue chakra, rushed towards the enemy. Toby could no longer do anything, as a result of which the snakes twisted him, lifted him high into the air, and later sucked all the remaining life energy out of him. Nagato managed to see how the body of his enemy withered, after which he himself closed his eyes forever. So that's how. Abito still lost? muttered the white half of the creature bending over Nagato. It even becomes offensive. Here I defeated Daidara, and he said goodbye to his life. So stupid. The other half did not agree with him. Daidara was a weakling, and it was not you who defeated him, but me. You are a useless byproduct of Madara-sama's creativity. I thought you did too. White Zetsu was indignant. You have no idea who I really am, came the mysterious answer. Keep quiet before I send you to Abito. A black hand reached out to the eyes of the defeated shinobi, whose hair had turned gray from using the last technique in his life. Uzumaki Nagato. Without knowing it, you prevented us from reviving our mother, Black Zetsu muttered. But this is not the end. Madara-sama's eyes will still be useful to me. I will unite the tailed ones, return the tree and wait until the mother is reborn. Itachi is coming, we better leave, White Zetsu warned him. Let him think that no one survived. The black half grinned, completed its plan, and the next moment the creature fell underground, preparing to complete its insidious plan. Perfect, weather, muttered a shinobi in a thoroughly wet uniform, who climbed into the observation tower near the tightly closed gate leading from the village. It is worth paying attention to the fact that he said this when he was already under the roof, and there was a reason for that. Many residents of Amigekure were afraid of accidentally doing something wrong in this downpour, that is, one might say, in front of the head of the village. This individual often found himself in all sorts of troubles, without wanting to, and sometimes could not resist making caustic remarks about everything in the world. All this included the top of the village, which was revered as gods. And I didn't want to play with the pride of the gods again. Who knows what the angel will do if he accidentally accuses her of some misfortune. During his short break, the ninja managed to run out for a snack, satisfying his tormenting hunger. True, on the way there and back I got wet to the skin. 
He nervously took one last drag on the almost damp cigarette and, with a flick of his finger, sent the butt into the endless bombardment of rain. You should use an umbrella or something, you idiot, grinned the Kunoichi, leaning on the railing of the tower and all the while looking boredly into the distance, at the metal spears of the towers. You can even think about anything under it. What about you? He grinned, measuring his partner with a deliberately appraising look. She was pretty, slender, dark-haired, with a pretty face. It was precisely these that our ninja loved, although he never showed a single sign of sympathy towards his girlfriend. Humlo, she turned away so that he could not see her face. The Kunoichi may have really loved this fool, but she, in turn, did nothing to bring them closer together. And now such a sarcastic comment pierced her to the very heart. And why was this? So attractive to her? She was saved by the walkie-talkie, which turned on only for a moment to make an incomprehensible sound, and then went silent again. Taking it in her hands, the kunoichi turned on the device. Says point 13. What happened to you? Reception, she asked, glancing sideways at her partner, who seemed not to care at all. Yes, it was Hariko who probably got on the walkie-talkie again, he tried to joke again, but the girl interrupted him with a sharp gesture the moment the walkie-talkie started talking again. This is point 14. Everything is in order. False alarm. Reception. End of connection, the speaker answered after a pause. The girl lowered her hand with the walkie-talkie, trying to remember who and where was on duty today. The voice she heard was unfamiliar to her. Relax, said his partner, noticing that she was tense. Go get something to eat. It helped me. He went back to the stairs leading down and spat. Pain Sama and Angel Sama are definitely non-humans with their demands, he looked up to make sure that the roof protected him from the all-seeing drops. Three shifts for the second time this week. You and I will die like this. In this tower. The girl sighed about to reprimand him for such words, but suddenly someone's hand grabbed the shinobi who had lost his vigilance by the leg and pulled him towards himself. Having lost his balance, he tried to grab onto something so as not to fall out, but only made things worse. Not having time to give life to a new curse, instead of falling to the ground with a possible happy outcome, the wit slipped his foot from the edge of the observation tower platform and, flying like a soldier down hit the same edge with his chin. Rushing to the edge, the Kunoichi came across a blonde young man in a blood-stained AIM uniform. The traitor to the village, as she thought, managed to dodge the falling body, jerk himself up and come face to face with her. With a lightning-quick movement developed over the years, the girl reached for the kunai holster on her hip, and then attacked the intruder. He deftly dodged, ducking under her hand and ending up behind her. The Kunoichi was not taken aback, deciding to deliver an arcing roundhouse kick. The kunai struck the protector that protected the enemy's forehead and left a diagonal scratch over the Amigakure symbol. The enemy himself, who remained completely unharmed, grabbed the girl by the throat before she could shout anything. Quickly, finish her. Another beauty for today. Maybe just turn it off. One beauty is enough for you. In his free hand appeared a cookery knife obtained on the black market, with which he finished off the victim, quickly stabbing the blade into her stomach several times. The last thing she managed to see, falling into a pool of her own blood, was violet eyes glowing in the darkness, in which there was not a drop of pity. Well, to the protector of the Khan, Naruto thought, pulling the ribbon with a metal plate from his forehead and carelessly throwing it on the floor. What a loss could still come in handy. He swore. Nonsense. Worthless trophy. You're not thinking about that, the Akatsuki have definitely noticed us already. Joker was sure that the Lords of Endless Rain had long known about their affairs with Kimiko. He glanced at the girl's body stretched out on the floor with her mouth open in a silent scream and, bending over her, raised the walkie-talkie. But why then was no one notified of our escape? His own voice sounded in his head again. 
I'm there, Jean. What to do next? Said the shinobi, raising his radio. Great. They have a lever on the console. Put it down so we can open the gate, Kimiko's voice came from the speaker. Why couldn't you just cross the wall? Asked Uzumaki. Ever since the Kanoha Sanin came here to fight pain, Amage Kure has been surrounded by a barrier, and the only way to enter or exit it is to go through the gate. Sanin from Kanoha? He asked again. Don't get distracted, Joker. Gates. I've already turned on my lever, he saw how a nearby observation tower directed a spotlight onto the wall, exactly where one of the exits from AIM was. It seems that Kimiko chose the easiest way to show him what to do next. See you there. This is no time for stories, Naruto agreed with her, pulling the lever and moving towards the stairs. Let's hurry up. This whole hemorrhoid with the gate has probably already attracted the attention of everyone we were trying not to disturb. Two ninjas jumped down and rushed to the opening gates from different sides right in the rain. Just as wet in the rain, Kimiko ran quickly, but at the same time silently. She was still wearing the same black pants and a sweatshirt with a hood over it, however, the gladiator's outfit had been supplemented by a scabbard with strangely shaped sickle-shaped daggers attached to her hips. This time the girl's face was clearly visible under the hood, it was not hidden by the incomprehensible darkness. Or maybe Kimiko's jutsu was now working so that Naruto could see her. When the fugitives were about to leave the village forever, they were suddenly surrounded by a squad of shinobi, whose members suddenly flocked from different directions. As soon as the enemies that appeared around our heroes grabbed their weapons, Naruto and Kimiko stood back to back. Don't touch mine, Kimiko said, throwing off the hood of her sweatshirt so that it would not interfere with her during the battle. The girl quickly made several seals and struck the wet, dirty ground with her hand. Forbidden Technique, Ring of Darkness The resulting hemispherical field of black chakra rushed like a wave towards the enemy shinobi. Three ninjas managed to jump back, and two of their comrades met with unprecedented technology. The chakra passed through them and seemed to burn all the energy in the body. The poor fellow's legs immediately gave way, and they, barely alive because their flesh began to lose life following the burnt spell, collapsed into puddles of water. Two male shinobi and one kunoichi, who managed to escape from the scattered equipment, rushed to attack in order to avenge their friends. Armed with an umbrella, the kunoichi jumped high and, waving her exotic weapon, sent several poison senbon fired from its tip straight at the offender, which flew so quickly that, cutting through the air and raindrops, they made a whistle. Water release, water trap, one of the ninjas deprived Kimiko of the opportunity to escape from the attack. After he made the seals, her legs found themselves in a small but powerful whirlpool, hindering her movements. The third one simply rushed forward, grabbing an unusual weapon in the form of a stick with two scythe-shaped blades at the ends. And Jean did not remain in debt. Snatching two inwardly curved blades from the sheaths attached to her hips, she hesitated a little and calculated something, and froze in place. Following this, with several lightning-fast movements, she deflected the Senban with her weapon, causing them to fly towards three enemies. The ninja who was very close collapsed while running due to the fact that two needles pierced his throat. The shinobi holding the water trap fell to the ground after him, catching the senban on his forehead. And the girl, who had landed by that moment, immediately covered herself with her own umbrella, fleeing the shelling. Kimiko, freed from the water shackles, rushed forward and, having made a beautiful tackle, but at the same time getting her clothes pretty dirty, drove under the open umbrella pointing forward and kicked it out of her opponent's hands. She only stepped back in surprise, and Jean, pushing off the ground, soared into the air like a snake in a jump, after which she dealt with the kunoichi with a cross blow. Naruto, who had not taken his eyes off his opponents all this time, heard the sounds of falling bodies behind him. Another forbidden technique? She's full of surprises. It was fast. 
His partner's battle ended even before he entered his battle, which made the guy again surprised at her fighting skills. Element of OG, the shinobi did not have time to finish, as the corner of a playing card, illuminated by purple chakra, pierced his forehead. Naruto formed a concentration seal and the card exploded, causing the first victim's head to shatter into small pieces. Boom! Blood splashed in all directions, sprinkling the ground, the comrades of the deceased and the killer, who winced when red drops appeared on his face and clothes, but did not look away. With a deft movement of his hand, the Joker tossed a deck of cards that had emerged from under his light long sleeve, and the next moment the cards were spinning in the air, hovering in it as if by magic and forming a circle. It was a technique called Street Flash, a new jutsu that Uzumaki had mastered during this time. It was quite simple, since holding the cards in the air did not actually require any special ninjutsu skills, each of these cards was simply pre-applied with a certain type of seal, which in turn was copied from one shinobi in the arena and printed from another card. It was a fuinjutsu that allowed things to be connected to the mind by infusing a minimal amount of chakra into them. That is, in fact, the user could move these objects with the power of thought, and in combination with sharp edges it was just a killer combination. Filled with chakra and guided by Naruto's hand, the cards flew at the first enemy who rushed towards him, sharpening on the fly and eventually piercing him in the chest. When the respirator shinobi received his dose of deadly projectiles, the former Jinchuriki redirected the remaining cards to another ninja. To defend himself, he had to use earthen equipment. Earth element, stone wall. The card stuck into the formed barrier, but Naruto was not taken aback. Lightning release, furious flash. From the second sleeve a queen of diamonds literally flew into his hand. Making a seal of concentration with his second hand. The next moment he shot at the obstacle separating him and the victim with lightning, which smashed the stone wall into pebbles and crashed into the shoulder of the enemy hiding behind it. Paralyzed, he fell down. Two more kunoichi and a masked shinobi who arrived from somewhere tried to attack at that moment while the enemy was enjoying his triumph. But their sudden rush forward was met with a new card thrown forward, a six of a cross, from which black metal cables opened with a pop, twisting all three of them together. Nimpo, the shackles that bind. Naruto said, watching with satisfaction as those caught wince as the cable continues to squeeze them. The new card in hand was a ten of hearts. After the Joker formed the seal of concentration, it sparkled, after which he took more air into his lungs. Earth Element, Dream Pollen The cloud of green gas he created momentarily hid his enemies from view. When they appeared again, they all fell to one side, immersed in a deep genjutsu. With a practiced movement, the Joker threw his open palm in front of him, and the card spent in battle flew into it. Not even, Jean was about to make a caustic comment, but instead of answering, Naruto grabbed her hand and ran to the gate, which began to close with a characteristic roar and clang. Faster. The shinobi, accelerating sharply, barely slipped through the closing gap and finally found themselves free. But it was too early to rejoice. Their path further was blocked by a gloomy figure in a black cloak with red clouds. He was a pale, red-haired man with piercings adorning his face and frightening violet eyes. Joker froze in place. His hardened heart began to beat quickly at the sight of this cloak. In front of him was one of the Akatsuki, and judging by the way Kimiko's hand gripped his arm tightly, the one he should fear the most. Naruto saw this man only from afar, when one day he descended from the highest tower in the village to address the people with a speech. P. Painsama, Jean whispered, releasing Naruto's hand and hesitantly backing away towards the gate that had slammed behind her. It seems that from a fearless killer at that very moment she turned into a girl frightened by a terrible monster who had never picked up a weapon. Naruto reached out to the Kukri, but the next moment the figure that grew in their path exploded into black crows, which scattered in different directions with a deafening flapping of wings and a terrible croak. It is he. Brother Sasuke. I hate it. Kill. Itachi, Naruto muttered, 
instantly recognizing the man who appeared in front of him after the Genjutsu dissipated. Hatred brought back some of the memories of the day when Uzumaki was torn from his friends and mentor, captured and unsealed. You will die for what you did to me. Cold rage flashed in the young man's violet eyes, he was about to rush at the enemy, showing him everything he had learned over the years, hiding in the shadows, but Akatsuki nipped his plan in the bud by activating his Sharingan. Two glowing red lights made the Uzumaki freeze in place in a position that a runner usually resorts to before starting a race from a high start. Uzumaki Naruto. That's who I never expected to see, the Uchiha said coldly, stepping towards the one who should have been in the next world long ago. Red eyes scanned him with a searching gaze. You have changed. Kimiko, who heard the Joker's real name for the first time, glanced sideways at her frozen companion in surprise, as if it was telling her something, but then quickly turned her gaze to the brunette in a cloak. Itachi. Jean exclaimed unexpectedly joyfully, which looked inappropriate if you remember her reaction to who the fugitives initially mistook Itachi for. Do you remember me? Kimiko, I had suspicions that it was you, said the Uchiha, whose voice suddenly softened. So you were strong enough to survive. Nagato underestimated you. Nagato? Who is Nagato? Naruto's head was bursting with questions that simultaneously popped up in his mind, do they know each other? What's going on here? Fortunately, Naruto could move his lips to ask this question. It's none of your business, said Itachi, whose Sharingan was spinning in his eyes, and the world before Naruto's eyes swam, turning into something blurry and incomprehensible. The same thing happened with the dialogue, which was continued by his partner, full of mysteries, and one of his worst enemies, whom he had been itching to attack for years. No need, he's with me. Jean exclaimed. Let us leave, you yourself promised me that you would help. The Uchiha looked at her seriously. You were too young for Akatsuki and the test that, pain prepared for you. I felt compassion for you, given what happened in your background, although I didn't think you'd be strong enough for that. My promise. Was a sign of pity, he said, watching the changes in the face of the white-haired Kunoichi, who froze in place, having heard everything that he really thought about her. One way or another, I will keep my word. He's with me, let him in, she whispered, blinking quickly and changing her face so as not to show that these words hurt her. He's dangerous. He was the Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails, you shouldn't be near him, Itachi interrupted, stepping towards Naruto and drawing a kunai from his sleeve. He should be dead a long time ago. Stop. If he was a Jinchuriki, then what value does he have to pain? The girl screamed. Itachi looked down. It doesn't matter now. There is no Akatsuki. You don't have to be afraid of pain anymore, he's dead. Now I'm in the village instead of him, said the Uchiha, after a short pause putting the kunai back. Are you letting us go? The young Kunoichi squeezed out. He's useless. The Jinchuriki have already been assembled, the Tentails is awakening, Akatsuki answered. Although I have nothing to do with this. Kimiko understood little of what she heard. What happened? Doesn't matter. This no longer concerns you or me. Go to Konoha, find your father. Uzumaki Naruto will guide you, let him consider the second life given to him as a gift. I won't hunt for him, the Uchiha waved his hand, and the Genjutsu that Uzumaki was in at that very moment dissipated. He regained consciousness and could move. Itachi gave him a cold look and said. We are no longer enemies, Uzumaki Naruto. I and the village don't care about you. Get out, both of you, and don't return to Amage Cure. Naruto, who was about to rush at him again, stopped again. Why on earth are you letting us go? What's going on here? He exclaimed. Don't ask questions but take care of Kimiko, since fate has tied you together. Help her get home. And when you see Sasuke again, don't tell him about me, don't send him to certain death, the brunette muttered, 
after which he turned into a flock of black crows, which scattered in different directions with cawing. Home? The joker asked, glancing questioningly at his companion. More and more riddles arose before the young man, to which he did not yet have an answer. Let's go, Uzumaki Naruto, Jean responded. If you are interested in this story, so be it, I will tell it along the way. The two fugitives set up camp in the forest, there was not much left to Kanoha, since most of the journey was left behind. A fire was blazing in the darkness, dispersing the pitch darkness. The flames intertwined with each other, soaring in a wondrous sensual dance. The coals crackled loudly, throwing out sheaves of bright sparks from time to time. In addition, the forest was filled with other sounds, such as the loud chirping of grasshoppers, the rustling of leaves, and rustling noises made by small animals that noticed the light source, became interested in what was happening, but were careful not to approach. All this brought bliss to both the guy and the girl, who were accustomed to the endless drumming of raindrops and the splashing of someone's feet in puddles. Tired travelers sat down on camp rugs on opposite sides of the fire. They had already had a snack, having roasted a hare caught along the way over the fire. The pot that had just contained tea was cooling down while standing on the ground. Kimiko gazed into the flames in fascination, stretching out her hands towards it. Naruto sat cross-legged and thoughtfully fingered a deck of cards in his hand. Taking his eyes off the cards that contained the techniques he had collected, he sometimes looked at his companion, whose face, despite the hood thrown over her head, was clearly visible. Usually, as soon as she hid under this hood, the girl's face was immediately hidden in darkness by an unknown technique. And now he could clearly see her face, her soft, clean skin, not counting the tiny mole under her lower lip, her small upturned nose, her green eyes with the reflection of a flame sparkling in them, and her white curls. Are you just going to stare at me or are you going to ask me something? She asked, moving her fingers over the fire. The joker gave her another interested look. All the way he was occupied with thoughts about the mysterious past of his companion. And why did Itachi tell them to return home? Was she really from Kanoha? How does she even know Itachi, how is she connected to Akatsuki and why did he let them get away? So many questions. I've never had so many questions, flashed through my head. She knows almost everything about me, and I know nothing about her, the second thought followed the first thought. Now you know my name, he muttered, putting the cards aside, reaching over to the wood pile and tossing a log onto the fire. So you know who I am. I think Itachi told you, although I don't understand why. He told me to help you get home. What does it mean? Jean smiled. You like to ask riddles yourself rather than look for answers to questions, right, Naruto? Or am I just interesting to you as a person? She answered the question with a question. You promise to answer questions about your past, so please, the former Jinchuriki responded coldly, not wanting to continue this battle of mysteries in verbal form. Kimiko seemed a little offended. She nodded and, looking into the fire, said. I was not born in Amage Cure. Like you, I was just a hostage of this place. I spent many years there, and my life turned into one continuous battle in the arena. But that's not how it all started. She pulled her hand away before a shower of sparks shot at her, the other hand remained extended to the fire, as if the girl missed this warmth so much that she could not tear herself away from it. I come from Iwaga Cure. As you probably know, this is one of the five great villages that Kanoha has been at war with. My mother belonged to the Akechi clan, servants of the Tsuchikage who received special training to counter the tailed beasts, the four tails, and the five tails if they got out of control. Our clan are specialists who master techniques that are considered forbidden. And we are the carriers of a special improved genome, Jean turned her palm over, and the next moment a clot of dark haze appeared in it, from which even the frantic flame of the fire seemed to fade slightly. It is darkness that is the essence of most of my ninjutsu. You've already seen what some of my techniques are capable of. Uzumaki was surprised, 
and surprising him was not so easy. Before his eyes, the dark haze dissipated, and the fire again gained its former strength, the coals crackling indignantly. Our clan is small. In the village, people with such abilities are treated with extreme caution and prejudice, although during the time of the first Suchikage we occupied a special position under him. But, you see, the second and third Suchikage were wise and knew how to choose Jinchuriki who not only could handle the power of the tailed tails within them, but could also use this power for the good of the village. Over time, the need for the original role of our clan disappeared. Many members of the Akechi clan left the village, and I don't know what happened to them. My family has always remained faithful to the village. And my mother, being young and inexperienced, participated in the Third World War against the Kanoha Shinobi. This is what the clan ordered, this is what the Tsuchikage decided. She paused to let Naruto digest this information. He nodded for her to continue. She met my father there. This was a shinobi from Kanoha. Also sent to war because it was necessary. They fought, but were unable to kill each other. Mom didn't tell me much. Most likely, I'm just a product of the passion that flared up between them, she muttered and fell silent. The girl drooped, and Naruto saw even more sadness in her eyes. And the mischievous smile completely disappeared. Jean pursed her lips and took a deep breath through her nose. For her, this story was not an easy test. I was born in Iwagakure after the end of the war. Nobody knew about the secret of my origin, but in the village I felt like a stranger. My mother was killed on one of the secret missions that the third Tsuchikage entrusted to her, and I was left completely alone. And then I decided to leave Iva. In general, this ninja. My father. He is a shinobi from the Hataki clan, the son of the White Fang. The Uzumaki shuddered. He seemed completely confused now. Sensei is your father? He squeezed out. Do you know him? Is he still alive? Kimiko quickly looked at the former Jinchuriki, not believing her ears. Was Itachi right and her father could really be found? Hataki Kakashi, your father, was my teacher and team captain after I graduated from the academy, Naruto said. The last time I saw him was more than three years ago, when I was captured by the Akatsuki. That's how I ended up in Amage Cure. I think. I hope. He's still alive. And he's waiting for you and me in Konoha. Kimiko blinked several times, preventing herself from crying with happiness. And she smiled again. How did you end up in Ama? He asked, wanting to know the rest of the story. I left the village early. It's too early to survive alone. But fortunately, I met a man who took me under his wing. One of the Kanoha Sanans, a hermit from Mount Mayabokuzan. Uzumaki thought. He thought he had heard this name before. And, ahead of his question, Jean said. No, I didn't tell him anything about my origin, although, probably, he could take me to Kanoha to my father. When I met him, we had such a good time and fun together that I was afraid of losing it all. I was afraid that I would end up in Kanoha, and they wouldn't accept me there. In general, he and I traveled a lot, he raised me, taught me, helped me master clan techniques using scrolls, read his books. Well, those that I could read, she grinned. Cheerful sparkles lit up in the green eyes of the white-haired Kunoichi, it seemed that memories of her teacher could quickly return her joy to life. However, they soon gave way again to sadness and grief. But this couldn't go on forever. We ended up in Amage Cure, Kimiko continued. Ever since the Kanoha Sanin came here to fight pain, Amage Cure has been surrounded by a barrier, and the only option to enter or exit it is to go through the gate, Naruto remembered her words. Pain was Jiraiya's student who took the wrong path, Kimiko explained. And the teacher decided to stop him at any cost. But he turned out to be too strong. He won. Akatsuki found out about my abilities and decided to use them, but I ran away. 
and she hid from pain under his own nose, remaining in Amage Cure and surviving thanks to battles. Itachi, no matter how bad a person you think he is, helped me. Although even he did not know where I was now and what I was doing. Naruto sighed. He had long forgotten how to give in to feelings, but Kimiko's story was so tragic. Sorry, I think that's all I can tell you for now, Kimiko sighed and rose to her feet, thereby making it clear that the conversation was over. I'll be back soon. As her silhouette disappeared into the darkness, Naruto added more wood to the fire. He lay down on the rug, listening to the crackle of the fire and looking at the stars visible through the gaps in the crowns of the trees with thick foliage. He missed them too. The Uzumaki remembered his nightly walks around Kanoha, when he would similarly find a quiet and secluded place and indulge in thoughts, admiring the lake from the fishing bridge or the view of the village from the mountain with the Hokage monument. In Amage Cure, all this was somehow forgotten. Survival was the top priority. And there was no time for such entertainment. I wonder how Kanoha has changed during this time. Will she take him back? And can we call it a home to return to? Uzumaki didn't know the answer to this question. He remembered his native village from two angles, the past spent in it under the stigma of, incarnation of, and his friends and Makoto, whom he learned to forget about. With such thoughts, the hero, without even noticing it, fell into sleep. This morning turned out to be surprisingly beautiful. The bright sun, rising from the horizon and illuminating the village with its first rays, warmed us with its warmth. A light spring breeze swept through the streets, ruffling the grass and leaves on the trees. The wall and huge gates, welcomingly open to the village's guests, towered ahead. They were exactly as the hero remembered them. And, feeling hundreds of memories awakening in his thoughts, he turned to Kimiko, smiling at her. We've arrived. Welcome to Kanoha. He said. She had been looking at everything around with surprise and admiration for a long time, trying not to miss a single detail. Luxurious forests, lakes, rivers, sown fields. The local landscapes were so different from those she was used to in Iwagakure, rough and gray. And now she saw the village, the homeland of her teacher and father, perhaps her new home. They impatiently quickened their pace and almost ran towards their cherished goal. He, to his past, which has already faded in memory over the past three years, but has now come to life, she, to her future, which can finally bring her happiness. The old man will be very happy. And surprised. I bet you he will choke on his pipe. And the guys, and the sensei, Naruto grinned, imagining how the third would react to his return. However, everyone will be surprised. But Kakashi will certainly be the most surprised. Let's not keep him waiting. Naruto already saw a familiar street with houses and part of the Hokage monument towering in the distance. He jumped up and rushed forward, forgetting that he was extremely reserved in the eyes of his companion, or tried to seem so. She echoed his words and actions and ran too. But something wrong happened. Something completely different from the Kanoha that Naruto knew. As soon as they approached the gate, quiet rustling sounds were heard from somewhere above, and several shadows cut the air. Masked Shinobi, apparently ANBU, landed in front of the travelers. Since when does Kanoha greet guests like this? The Joker instinctively recoiled, Jean followed suit. Masked ninjas looked at the uninvited guests with unfriendly glances, and although the masks did not reveal their emotions, there was not even a hint of a friendly attitude here. Shinobi of Amage Cure? Said one of them, stepping forward. You are not welcome here. Naruto realized his mistake belatedly. No wonder he was mistaken for the enemy. If Jean in a black hoodie and pants did not evoke certain thoughts about belonging to any village, then his uniform as an ordinary Amage Cure shinobi had the opposite effect. We are not from Amage Cure. What's going on here? Why is no one allowed through the gate? Uzumaki asked, not remembering that in the old days it was so difficult even for foreigners to enter the village. 
Where did Izumo and Kotetsu's guard post go? Why, instead of friendly Chunin, are they greeted by a squad of ANBU? By decree of the Hokage, entry into the village without a pass or invitation is prohibited. You have trespassed. Grab them. The ANBU commanded. Stop. It's some kind of mistake. I am Uzumaki Naruto, one of you. Joker exclaimed, but it was too late. Two ninja rushed at him, two more rushed towards Kamiko. And the head of the detachment, who was conducting a dialogue with them, began to put seals. You said that Kanoha is happy for everyone. Kimiko was indignant, because all her expectations were deceived. So it was. But something has changed. Don't harm them, Naruto reached for the kukri, but stopped, realizing that it was not worth using weapons in battle against one's own. Instead of a blade, a deck of cards appeared in his hand. From which Uzumaki pulled out two at once and threw them at the approaching enemies. It exploded, turning into greenish smoke, which has a soporific effect. But ninjas were not so simple. They jumped out of the cloud without swallowing any smoke, and attacked the Uzumaki with a tanto in their hands. Don't harm them. Uzumaki managed to shout, jumping back and dodging two blades at once. So, they can kill us, but we can't. Jean parried the attack of the first enemy, taking the tanto blade on a kanai. The collision of the blades caused a shower of sparks, from which the girl closed her eyes and almost missed the second blow aimed at her chest. She managed to dodge, but the offender's tonto managed to scratch her shoulder with the blade, tearing the fabric of her sweatshirt. The girl swore and, raising her hand back, opened her palm. Out of the corner of his eye, Naruto saw a blue ball of spinning chakra appear above the kunoichi's palm. When it was completely formed, she took a step towards the enemy and slammed the technique into his stomach, forcing him to fly back. Rasengan. The second ninja, who decided to attack from the side while the enemy was distracted, paid bitterly for this, as the girl performed an impressive acrobatic feint, and a circular kick landed right in the enemy's mask. He flew back with a cracked mask and apparently a broken nose. Lightning release, paralyzing waltz. Naruto exclaimed, throwing out the card, which exploded into a web of lightning, which one of the attackers hit and fell, knocked out by the technique. The second enemy, it seems, had to be fought in close combat. The Uzumaki quickly rushed forward, not afraid of the weapons in the hands of the ANBU. He ducked under the blade as his opponent stabbed, grabbed his opponent's hand by the wrist and, spinning a little on his toes and straightening up, hit him in the face with his elbow. After this, the Jinchuriki rewarded the enemy with a knee blow to the stomach and, forcing him to bend in half, was about to finish him off, when suddenly the fifth ninja said. Wood element, wood fetters. The ground beneath the Uzumaki's feet shook, and massive roots burst out with a roar, twisting and immobilizing the joker. A moment later, the same thing happened to Jean, who dropped the kanai from her hand and winced in pain. The ninja stepped forward, pleased with what he had done. He glanced at his comrades lying around and gave the prisoners a look of contempt. Not bad for an aim shinobi. But you are nothing against Danzo-sama's guards, he muttered. Danzo-sama? Naruto squeezed out, starting to understand what was happening. The image of the unpleasant old man who had been so interested in him in the past came to mind. Stop. I am Uzumaki Naruto. Listen. Kimiko was already gathering her strength to break free and show the ANBU how wrong he was, but suddenly another masked ninja jumped from the gate. Yamato, stop, he ordered, landing next to the head of the squad. Even before the shinobi took off his mask, Naruto knew who he was. He recognized the voice. Sasuke, he whispered. When the mask with blue patterns was removed, he saw the face of a brunette, who had matured during this time and was surprisingly cold. Wasn't he the least bit happy to see his old friend? Naruto. It's really you, the Uchiha grinned, stopping in place. 
safe and sound. It was in vain that the third arranged your funeral. And that's all you can tell me? The Uchiha measured him with a cold gaze. The next moment, red lights lit up in his eyes. The Tomo swirled around the pupil, and Naruto felt that his body was no longer listening to him. I was going on a mission, but I think this matter will have to be postponed for a while, he waved his hand, and another shadow in a cloak, watching everything from the gate and not showing up until that moment, disappeared. Yamato, help me escort the guests to the fifth. Under the escort of elite ANBU shinobi led by Sasuke, Naruto, and Jean were led to the one who now led the village. The prisoners' wrists were shackled with cold, chakra-absorbing cuffs. The path through Kanoha was a blur for Uzumaki. And it wasn't just because he was under the influence of a genjutsu. Even in this state, looking around and seeing seemingly familiar places and faces, he realized that the village had changed beyond recognition. Look! It's him, Uzumaki Naruto. Crowds of people who had seen the procession gathered to see what was happening. It was difficult not to recognize the grown-up boy and the young man, whom the villagers remembered as a fiend of. He's alive, it's incredible. Uzumaki, before whose eyes everything blurred and in a matter of seconds gathered again into a clear picture, did not hear a single curse addressed to him. Were people so surprised by his return that they forgot about their hostility? He lowered his gaze, examining his own legs, moving forward with difficulty. Sasuke, what are you doing? Uzumaki heard a familiar voice and raised his head with difficulty, trying to focus his vision on the people blocking the street. It's Naruto. Let him go, now. He shuddered when he saw the familiar face of his best friend, badly disfigured by a terrible scar. Shikamaru, dressed in the standard green shinobi uniform, and this was undoubtedly him, had only one arm, and the sleeve was tied where it ended. The worst thing was that the Joker no longer remembered what happened to his comrade on that terrible day and whether he himself had a hand in it. Naruto read firm determination in Nara's gaze. And who is this standing on each side of his comrade? With an effort of will, Uzumaki again tried to focus his gaze and saw a long-haired, plump guy in red clothes with metal inserts that made it look like armor. It was undoubtedly Choji and he has become more confident in himself. Uzumaki smiled bitterly and, turning his gaze, froze in place, realizing who was in front of him. A dark-haired girl in black pants and a purple blouse visible from under an unbuttoned green vest also did not take her eyes off him. In her dark eyes, already wet with tears, he saw so much pain and happiness that his heart sank in his chest. The Joker couldn't understand what was happening to him. It seemed like he was starting to become human again. The Uzumaki felt a kick that forced him to go forward, because the convoy did not stop in front of the three shinobi, but continued on its way to the Hokage. He told you to stop. Mikoto exclaimed. Sasuke, hearing her voice, nevertheless stopped and with a gesture of his hand ordered his people to do the same. Mikoto, I don't have to obey someone who is of lower rank than me, the Uchiha muttered especially for some disabled person. I only take orders from one person, and that is five. Get out of the way, he muttered. What is wrong with you? You captured your teammate. Sasuke, come to your senses, Choji said, frowning. Our team no longer exists, the Uchiha grinned. Naruto Uzumaki, safe and sound, as we see, left Konoha and was absent for more than three years. According to the law, he is recognized as a nuke nin for betraying his homeland, his future fate will be decided by Danzo-sama. What's happening? Naruto didn't understand. Am I a traitor? Has Sasuke become a local authority? The fact that he is a traitor is confirmed by the fact that he attacked our people. And this captive helped him, therefore, she also deserves punishment, Sasuke finished. Mikoto blinked and the Sharingan lit up in her eyes. The Uchiha reached for the handle of the Tonto behind his shoulder, slowly taking a fighting pose. The short blade left its sheath and flashed in the rays of the sun. 
Silence reigned, even the residents crowded on the sides of the street fell silent at once. Stop. A rustling sound was heard, and the one who was supposed to stop this madness jumped from the roof of a nearby building. It was Kakashi Hitaki himself, landing between his former student and his team. Sasuke, put down your weapon. Kakashi-sensei? Uzumaki squeezed out, attracting the teacher's attention. Sensei? Jean repeated after Naruto, staring at the ash-haired man in the mask. Kakashi? They take up my time. Kakashi-san, order them to retreat, and I will forget about this little incident, the Uchiha shrugged. Putting away the Tonto. Kakashi paused, as if thinking about something, then nodded. Guys, go back. What have you done here? He turned to the students and with a gesture of his hand ordered them to leave. But Naruto is there, Shikamaru objected. Hataki looked at all three of them with a look that did not tolerate objections, and Choji and Shikamaru, nodding in turn, moved out of the way, standing to the side and joining the crowd of observers. Mikoto waited until she and Naruto made eye contact before the Sharingan in her eyes swirled and then went out. Uzumaki felt his consciousness being cleared of traces of Sasuke's genjutsu, and the guy felt much better. The next moment, when he closed his eyes, he shuddered when he saw in front of him what he least expected to see. It was a dark and damp dungeon in the subconscious of the former Jinchuriki, barely recognizable after three years of absence. The huge hall was reduced to ruins, as if something terrible had happened there. The ceiling was missing, and instead of it all that was visible was empty and lifeless blackness. Deep cracks ran along the floor and walls, still flooded with water. And the huge lattice gate in the wall was knocked out. One of their doors was lying on the floor, and the second was sticking out of the wall, stuck in it at an angle, like a huge shuriken. The cage where the nine tails had previously been imprisoned was now empty, but still gloomy. Uzumaki felt that Kurama's empty prison had turned into a kind of black hole to which he was drawn and which could not be closed. And in the midst of all this terrible disgrace, he saw her, standing at the very epicenter of this chaos and looking around. He was finally able to see Mikoto, notice all the changes that had happened to her and think that she had probably become a completely different person. However, like himself. Mikoto? What are you doing here? He squeezed out, coming closer. She turned to him and sighed with relief, realizing that she really had gotten where she wanted. Before the girl could say anything, she was overcome with wild emotions, and the next moment she rushed to Naruto to hug him. He hesitated and also hugged her, feeling how quickly the heart of his beloved, abandoned for three years, was beating. I thought I'd never see you again, she whispered through tears. I'm here. Everything is fine. At least in this place, Uzumaki muttered and, looking around and realizing that it simply couldn't be good in such a place, he added. I mean, not in handcuffs. Mikoto pressed herself against him for a few more seconds and, having calmed down, pulled away and looked at Naruto, also noticing some changes in his appearance, the most important of which she voiced immediately. God. Your eyes. They are a different color. As you can see, I will no longer be the blue-eyed handsome man you remember me as, he tried to laugh it off, but realized that he had to explain everything. When the Akatsuki ripped the nine tails out of my body and sealed it away, they drained all my chakra. And I died. There was still some Kyubi chakra left in me, pitiful grain somewhere in the corners of that cell. As it turned out, my mother and father managed to transfer their chakra to me before their own death. And when there was no chakra left in my body, their power awakened and, mixing with what was left of the nine tails, brought me back to life. I woke up with these eyes. So that's how it happened, Mikoto whispered in horror. So the nine tails was in that cage? The Uzumaki glanced at the hole in the wall, where there was now only darkness. Yes. And I'm glad he's gone. He got what he deserved, he muttered rather coldly, which frightened the Uchiha. 
the former Jinchuriki realized that he would have to explain himself again. Nine-tailed fox. Karama. I've heard his voice for as long as I can remember. He became my mentor and friend. I thought so. I owed everything that I achieved to him. He guided me on my path, shared his experience and wisdom, and served as a source of strength and inspiration. But he betrayed me. Betrayed? Mikoto didn't understand. The demon killed my parents with his own hands. And he lied to me that Madara did it. He pretended to be my comrade, led me through deception and prepared me for the fact that one day I would free him and give up my body to him. Everything, my whole life was his cunning plan. The brunette sighed. Her life, too, could hardly be called happy. It was as if the first few chapters had been torn out of the book of her past. No memories of childhood, even the bloody massacre with which the girl's foreseeable past began, were not imprinted in her memory. It all started with the hospital, where she woke up, this memory was followed by time at the academy, where the girl was a stranger for some time, then she found friends, both of whom, however, were already dead. Was there happiness in her life? Perhaps, yes, for example, when she became part of Team 7, which included the only surviving blood relative, a kind and wise sensei and Naruto, who became more than a friend to her. And yes, she felt good with Choji and Shikamaru, who were loyal and caring comrades. But all these grains of good were just small stars in the black endless space of sadness and loss that life entailed. The loss of a family, which probably fell along with Sasuke's family at the hands of Uchiha Itachi, the death of friends, the first of whom, Sakura, passed away before she even really began, and the second, Ino, was brutally killed by Akatsuki on the day when Mikoto's life seemed to shatter like a crystal vase. Naruto disappeared from her life, and Sasuke ceased to be himself. Next came the death of the third, the day after which Kanoha changed, ceasing to be a native and beloved place. But despite all this, the Uchiha never complained. She felt sorry that Naruto, whose path had been equally difficult, had to go through yet another tragedy. This is terrible. Your parents. Do you know who they were? She said sadly, remembering how the third revealed to the village the secret of the origin of the boy whom no one loved. While few people that day realized how wrong they were to stigmatize the heir of the fourth, who was the hero who held in his body what once nearly destroyed Kanoha, by now people had already forgotten about their attitude towards the Uzumaki, as evidenced by the fact that that today not a single living soul began to curse him when the former Jinchuriki returned safe and sound. Yes, Naruto nodded. And it seems to me that somehow the truth was revealed to the whole village, and it's no longer a secret for you either. Everyone knows, the Uchiha confirmed. The third Hokage told people the truth. He made a whole speech wanting to clear your name. Perhaps. I have suspicions. This is what ruined him. I'm not sure. So the old man is dead, Uzumaki sighed. All his worst fears were confirmed. I'm not surprised that it was Danzo who took his place. But why did Sasuke become his pawn? Mikoto looked sadly into the guy's eyes. I think it's all because of his obsession to become stronger. A lot has changed, Naruto. Kanoha is not what it used to be, she closed her eyes. I should interrupt the technique so that no one suspects anything. I understand, Joker nodded, remembering that he never asked how Mikoto ended up in his subconscious. Has her ability to use the Sharingan reached a new level? However, so much time had passed. Naruto was sure that he was not the only one who had learned new tricks during these three years. I have a request. Tell Kakashi-sensei that my companion came to Kanoha for a reason. She is his daughter. Mikoto, whose mouth opened in surprise, disappeared into thin air, followed by this gloomy place that reminded Naruto of the Nine Tails. When Naruto opened his eyes, he felt another push in his back. Move, Yamato ordered him. Let's not keep five waiting. The Uzumaki looked at Mikoto. 
The girl joined her friends, although her face, like Shikamaru and Choji, did not express any desire to give in. Then Kakashi-sensei left Sasuke's path. A wise decision, the Uchiha grinned and ordered his men to follow him further. Uzumaki Naruto himself, the old man's hand squeezed his cane. Danzo himself, as soon as the uninvited guests were brought in, tried to portray something like a smile on his face. I'm glad you're back, boy. You must remember me. The Uzumaki met the fifth Hokage's gaze. Danzo-sama. I see that after refusing to join the route, you found a new candidate for the role of your pet, he replied. Looking around the office, Naruto realized that Shimura had not left this place unchanged. Sasuke, who was standing like a pillar near the entrance, clenched his teeth, realizing that they were talking about him. He exchanged glances with Yamato, who made it clear that this remark should be ignored. The Uchiha, who had learned to control his emotions, calmed down, although for the rest of the time he did not take his contemptuous gaze off his former teammates back. Why be insolent, boy? You know who you're talking to, right? Now I am in charge of everything in the village. And I can do with you what I see fit. I thought you and I would become friends and I could restore your rank, but such antics make me doubt it, Hiruzen's former advisor said coldly. Introduce your friend. Kimiko, ignored by everyone except the curious villagers staring at her as they were led to the Hokage, shuddered. She didn't like the old man with half his face hidden in bandages. This is Jean, Naruto limited himself to the nickname. He exchanged glances with his companion, and she understood from his gaze that it was not necessary to dignify the old man with details of his origin. Hokage-sama, I'm very glad to meet you, she bowed her head, although it was not easy to look friendly towards a person who smelled of evil. Joker and I became something of a team and helped each other along the way here. I assure you that I do not wish harm to the village. Joker? Is that what they call you now? Danzo grinned. Learn manners. Remove the handcuffs from the girl. Yamato complied with his request, and Jean rubbed her wrists, which left unpleasant marks on them. Welcome to Kanoha. I apologize for this misunderstanding, but I have no right to just let you out. Times are tough now. You will have to undergo testing by our agents who specialize in interrogation. If you cooperate, I will definitely talk to you again. Yamato, please show your guest off, said Five. Kimiko looked at Uzumaki, who nodded briefly before she was led away. Only Naruto, Sasuke and the fifth Hokage remained in the office. The old man stood up from his chair and, thoughtfully casting a cold glance at the man who had returned from the dead, turned to the window, fixing his gaze on his possessions. Well, what's it like there on the other side? He asked. What are you about? Naruto asked, wondering what the old man meant. Is he really talking about death? It's difficult to survive after extracting the tailed one. My sensors said it's no longer inside you. They also noticed changes in your chakra. I think you were brought back to life by some kind of technique, Danzo explained. You've been gone for three years, and I can't turn a blind eye to such details. Maybe the Akatsuki have turned you into their weapon, and you pose a threat to the village? However, then they would make you more friendly. I don't know what they are planning. After the destruction of Kirigakure, nothing is heard from them. I am not a weapon of the Akatsuki, Uzumaki muttered. I am me. But I'm not at all sure about Sasuke. Shimura grinned. Sasuke found his place. Like everyone in this village. Hiruzen turned a blind eye to many things, but I managed to put everything in order. He narrowed his eyes. You have changed. Got rid of fear, as far as I can see. And he became stronger without my help. I don't know what exactly you are capable of, but I see a lot in you. Commendable. I don't need your praise, the former Jinchuriki answered coldly. Why are you against me? Danzo asked. It seems to me that when you were little, 
we had a completely different relationship. Everything has changed. I've changed, the blonde looked over his shoulder. Your brother had a hand in this. Sasuke winced, but didn't move. What are you trying to achieve? Boy? You've returned and you're pretending to be something incomprehensible, Danzo turned to Uzumaki and gave him a withering look. Unexpectedly for himself, the old man received the same look in response. It seemed that Naruto was ready to express what he had been keeping to himself for a long time. I'm angry. On Sasuke, that he so easily betrayed his friends and became your obedient puppy. And at you, Danzo-sama, sparkles sparkled in the Joker's violet eyes. The D9 tales long ago revealed to me the secret of who my parents are. And even as a child, I had doubts about you. I think it was you who convinced the third to keep my origins a secret, you took away from me everything that was left after my parents. You came to me and tried to become a caring grandfather, taking me under your wing. How hypocritical. The old man clenched his teeth. No one allowed themselves to speak to him in such a tone. However, he found it interesting. Besides, Naruto turned out to be quite smart. So that's what it's all about, he grinned. And you kept this to yourself for many years? I decided that I wouldn't let anyone push me around anymore. Neither the Nine Tails, nor you, said Naruto. Well, you have a right to be angry. And for me, asking questions. The root will test and study you. And your girlfriend. Something tells me that she is also a very valuable specimen, and some people will be interested in knowing all your secrets. Sasuke, the Hokage's assistant, who by this moment was right behind his former teammate, nodded, obeying the order that was already clear to him. Naruto felt the touch of a cold finger on his neck, and then fell into darkness. Gloomy underground laboratory. It seemed that this was where Naruto was currently. He wasn't sure if this was part of the root base, the location of which was classified. It was cold here. And the air had a disgusting cave taste, which the local workers were probably used to, but Naruto was awakening unpleasant memories, since the same smell was in that place in his subconscious, where he had recently returned, having communicated with Mikoto unnoticed by everyone, in the place, where the Ninetales was imprisoned for years. And now there was only emptiness and the ruins of a prison holding the legendary demonic force. Naruto spent most of his time under the influence of Genjutsu, with a bag over his head, or under the influence of drugs that had been injected into him too, maybe ten times already. He thought that he was strong, that he was ready for anything after everything he had experienced, but it turned out that such measures of influence on the mind and body could not only make him lose track of time, but also again experience a feeling of loss and his own insignificance. The Nine Tails is not here, he heard, feeling someone's cold palm on his forehead. Uzumaki again fell into the subconscious and found there a man in a long black leather coat and bandana. He scoured Uzumaki's memory, his thoughts, looking into the darkest corners, like a detective investigating a case. The man's face was adorned with scars, and his stern gaze searched for every important detail, a clue that could trace everything that happened to Naruto during his absence from the village. Now the stranger stood in front of an empty, destroyed cage, and Naruto, standing motionless in place, watched his actions. Where did they take him? The man turned sharply, approaching Uzumaki and meeting his gaze. Don't know. I'm not privy to their plans, Naruto's lips said of their own accord, although he had no desire to have a conversation with the intruder into the orgy of his mind. What did they do to you? Your chakra has become different, the uninvited guest continued to ask. Killed. And they threw it away like unnecessary garbage, Naruto said again against his will. What's happening? Flashed through his head. We are checking you, the shinobi said, as if he had heard this thought. We're in your head. You have no secrets from us. The former Jinchuriki shuddered, realizing that Mikoto's penetration into his mind was much more delicate. Here and now. This man rudely invaded his very essence, 
wanting to learn as much as possible about someone who clearly did not want to be read like an open book. The Uzumaki felt anger, and the next moment the blackness in the missing ceiling flashed with a discharge of red lightning. Of course you don't like it. Surely you want to drive me away from here, the man grinned, looking up. A moment later he became cold again, and the impenetrable stony grimace returned to his face. In my defense, I'll say that you don't have a resort here either. I haven't seen such psychos for a long time. As if to confirm his words, another flash flashed above, and the walls instantly turned red. But these were not reflections of lightning, but bloody inscriptions of a threatening nature. Away. I'll kill you. You'll regret this. They echoed the voices in Naruto's head, repeating his own. Everything here is so confused, it's as if someone tied your thoughts into a knot, then tore them with their hands and glued them together as necessary, the man in the raincoat told him. Is this the consequences of extracting the nine tails or has it always been this way? The Uzumaki clenched his teeth, not wanting to have a conversation with someone who treated his mind so familiarly. You are resisting, that is. Commendable. Well, if you don't want to talk, let's see, he suggested, and the world around them changed. The ruined hall that served as Karama's prison was replaced by a forest immersed in the evening darkness, which seemed vaguely familiar, although the guy did not remember having ever seen this place. The Uzumaki realized that these were his memories when he saw himself, bursting into tears as a baby, with two men leaning over him, pierced by a long curved claw. A blonde man in a white cloak, in which one could guess the fourth Hokage, showing off on the monument, and with him a woman in a dress, whose red hair hung down to her shoulder blades, smiling and looking through tears at the baby lying on the altar. It was them, his parents, who, as if with a sword, were finished off by the nine tails, shackled in golden chains, trying to reach the baby. Before Uzumaki had time to watch his father make a series of seals and call upon the Shinigami, who sealed the Kyubi into his son's body, the picture ceased to be clear and, when it came together from the dark stains again, he saw himself in front of a huge cage, behind which sat the Nine Tails, who revealed to him his name, the truth about his parents and a promise to make him strong. Everything around began to move, as if in fast motion. Naruto's memories flashed past, replacing each other. The world took on other forms, and the boy saw himself sitting in a chair in the third's office. The old man smiled, smoking a pipe, and showing Naruto a huge crystal ball lying in his hand. Then the memories formed into a street littered with the corpses of members of the Uchiha clan. I remember that, grinned the man in the cloak, who remained next to him all this time. He closed his eyes, as if addressing someone, and said. Hurry up, that's not what we're interested in. Here Itachi and Sasuke's parents, who were killed by him, appeared before the audience, lying on the blood-stained floor, then a bright flash, a hospital, the first meeting with Mikoto, boring everyday life at the academy, rare glimpses of joy while playing shogi with Shikamaru, then again a dark evening, naked in Sakura's dirty body, and he, again scared half to death, plunges a knife into the rapist. The spectator in the black cloak winced, seeing all this, and asked the unknown interlocutor to once again speed up the scrolling of the memories. That terrible evening was followed by a conversation with Kyubi, mastering the Mito Uzumaki Jutsu, for which Naruto discovered an amazing talent, a meeting with Danzo, again grey everyday life, training and evening walks alone, distribution of teams, testing skills with Kakashi Sensei, the first simple missions in the village, training with Sasuke and Mikoto, traveling to the land of birds. Meeting with the Nukneen from Takigekir and Brutal Reprisal. You're not the squeamish type, the shinobi commented as young Naruto rummaged through the insides of the green-haired girl in search of a smaller scroll. The Uzumaki responded with silence, contemplating how he and his team made it to the land of birds and then returned to Kanoha. Here he and his comrades are again training at the training ground, and Kakashi apologizes for being late. So he accompanies Mikoto home and surprises her with a magic trick. Not bad, the person watching this forced him to distract himself from pleasant thoughts, reminding him of his presence with another comment. 
It was not so pleasant to follow the further development of the relationship with the girl in the presence of a stranger. Uzumaki felt no shame at such a rude invasion of the most intimate thing that was in his memory. But he felt insulted and harbored a grudge. Finally, the memories reached the very moment when the boy's life turned upside down again. This was a mission to Takigekir, where the teams of Asuma and Kakashi suffered a crushing defeat from Akatsuki, and Naruto was captured. Another mistake of the third, the observer in the black cloak remarked bitterly. Danzo-sama would never send Genin on a matter involving a Jinchuriki. Ignoring this remark, Uzumaki relived the extraction of the Nine Tails and awakening in the morgue. The observer followed his actions in Amigekure with interest, noting that Naruto was able to adapt perfectly to even the most difficult circumstances. He asked his invisible partner to slow down the memories so he could see Naruto fighting in the arena. A bunch of scum and, at the same time, the best of the best. Interesting, he remarked as he watched Uzumaki enter the arena against an eyepatch wearing shinobi armed with a fighting pole. The filled hall froze in anticipation of a new battle. A pretty blonde in bright clothes entered the arena, introducing the champion nicknamed the Eye of the Phantom and the unknown newcomer Joker, who came to this place for the first time as a fighter. We've started, she announced, leaving, and the two fighters were surrounded by a barrier that separated them from the audience. The opponents began to circle opposite each other, not daring to strike the first blow. Apparently, they were thinking through a battle strategy, knowing that going into a blind attack was obviously a losing proposition. During this time, Naruto managed to assess the enemy externally. He was a man of average height, with a rather fragile build. However, the figure could be deceiving. The Eye of the Phantom in this place was assigned the honorary title of one of the champions, although, coming here as a spectator, Naruto never saw him fight with anyone. As for the enemy's age, Uzumaki guessed that he was around 20 or 25. The mysterious enemy's short haircut and choice of weapon could indicate that he belonged to some kind of monk. In this case, he would be distinguished not only by superior experience, but also by better training in terms of taijutsu. Scared, newbie? He grinned. The voice of the man with the eye patch was unexpectedly harsh for a man of less impressive physique. He sounded confident. I prefer to think before chopping all sorts of assholes into pieces, Uzumaki responded, stopping and reaching for the sheath on his hip, which contained the cookery knife he had bought. The enemy decided not to give him a chance to pull out his weapon and rushed forward, trying to land a precise blow on the Joker's hand when he pulled out his weapon. But it turned out to be not so simple. He jumped back, jerking his hand, and three cards fell out of his sleeve into the blonde's palm, which he immediately threw at his opponent, making a seal of concentration. Three explosions made the audience flinch, although thanks to the barrier they were in no danger. The eye of the ghost managed to jump back, but the explosion caught his weapon, and the stick, along which a crack appeared, fell apart in the man's hands. Naruto grinned as he armed himself with another card before throwing it at his enemy. He reacted in a very unexpected way. Instead of dodging, he rushed towards the Joker and, catching the card in mid-flight, threw it back, expecting that by that time he would form a seal of concentration and explode. Or at least be stunned by this turn of events, and then the champion would be able to finish him off. But what was the surprise of the eye of the ghost when the guy nevertheless made the seal of concentration and the explosion did not occur? Earth Element Stone block! exclaimed the former Jinchuriki, and the card approaching him stuck to the floor, turning into a rock protruding from it, into which the enemy, who did not have time to stop, would have flown if not for his reaction speed. Fire release, fist of enraged flames! he exclaimed, making three seals and making his hand glow with tongues of fire dancing across it. Everyone was so amazed at how the technique smashed the rock into pieces that they did not notice how Naruto grinned contentedly, hiding something in his back pocket and jumping to the side so that the technique did not have time to hit him. He threw several more cards in front of him, and they, sharpened in the air and illuminated by the purple glow of chakra, rushed towards the man. 
They would have tormented him like a target with shurikens, if not for the trump card that the champion had saved for such a case. Be a Kugan. He exclaimed, and swollen blood vessels ran along the left side of his face, stretching from the eye, hidden by the bandage. The enemy's movements became surprisingly fast and accurate, and he managed to dodge, escaping all the shells fired at him. Wow, Uzumaki squeezed out, not expecting such a turn of events. During one of the training sessions, he had the opportunity to see what the Byakugan of the Hyuga clan was capable of, and besides, Kurama had told him a lot about this dojitsu at one time. The crowd became noisy. The regulars of this place shouted in approval, because they had been waiting for this moment for a long time, and new visitors began to whisper, not believing what they were seeing. So what was the secret of the eye of the ghost, hidden under the bandage? Shadow cloning technique. The blonde had to do something that he rarely did, almost never, use the technique with the help of seals.